This week we'll be talking to a variety of remarkable people whose work within the hospitality industry has faced enormous challenges due to recent events. Hospitality, like the entertainment industry, has been shaken to the core with so many businesses going bust. With restrictions lifted after so many months closed, how did so many businesses make their comeback? So I'm here today in Jersey and I'm going to be talking to Natalie Parkin who owns Salty Dog. She sent us some harrowing footage at the beginning of lockdown and we want to just see how she's progressed. And today's been a really, really tough day and you might see a little bit of emotion in me. Um, but I guess that's what's happening to a lot of people at the moment, isn't it? With dealing with this situation of the Covid saga chapter in our lives. Okay, so we've been here for 22 years. It's our birthday on the 22nd of May and we are entering into the second, third month of, of Covid. Um, on the 22nd of March, a week after having met with our government and representatives of the Jersey Hospitality Association, of which I am a board member. Our restaurant was shut down, along with every other restaurant and bar on the island, on Mother's Day of all days. Um, right now I'm facing a situation where basically I'm, I'm fighting for survival, with very little money coming in, albeit that I'm proud to say that my delivery and takeaway service has increased week on week and where we would normally have seen an income of you know 30 possibly 30,000 pounds at this time of year in a week we get excited about getting four or maybe three week five we've seen week and week increases on our income on the food and delivery side so that's very positive it means that we're doing a good job but nevertheless the outgoings are still pretty high and i'm under a great deal of pressure from my landlord in particular to pay my rent which is um, in excess of sixty thousand pounds for the year one of the things that I'm finding the hardest, you know, our team has pulled together. We've diversified, we've changed our operations, we've adapted and we have um, shown great initiative to fight through this challenge. For me personally, one of the hardest things that I'm finding is the daily battle of finding a way to negotiate with my bank and with my landlord and it's an area that I find myself very un it's an extremely uncomfortable position to be in. I'm having to use tactics, dialogue, think of elements in business and contracts and arrangements and leases and financial obligations that are mentally challenging to make the right decision, to say the right thing and to put in place the right measures to see, see this through and to get their confidence and belief in me to make some kind of agreement of compromise in order to allow the business to survive and see see through these next few months and that's the bit that I'm finding the hardest me personally because you know I'm in the business of hospitality and restaurants and um, turning over making good GPs and producing food and and a, running a great little business that's been here for 22 years and done really well I'm not a cutthroat, ruthless, 
businesswoman. We're providing food for a lady up the road who's um, not able to get out. Bye bye, Mrs. Linden. And um, her daughter comes and picks up a meal for her every day. As far as the island is concerned, obviously the impact on our industry has been massive. And um, I doubt very much whether all businesses will reopen and a lot of them are struggling right now and um, financial implications, short term, long term, medium term are, are catastrophic to say the least. Jobs will be lost, redundancies will be made, businesses will fold and long standing establishments won't reopen their doors and that possibly may happen to me which is an awful thing to have to consider. The government has implemented a co-funding scheme. The first phase was rolled out in March for the last week of March and where we were supported for that week from the 22nd of March which I mentioned earlier was when we were actually shut down and we have been um, so provided with funds to offer our, uh, to, su to supplement the payroll for at the end of the month. So I'm outside the restaurant still, you can see our Union Jack and our um, Jersey flag there in preparation for what would have been the 75th Liberation Day anniversary celebrations due to take place on Friday and Saturday, which have all been postponed until further notice. This area here outside the restaurant would normally be filled with chairs, tables and chairs, all stacked up over there right now. Brand new, not been sat on by a single client. We've got one chef on the stove, and one chef in another section, so that they don't ever actually come into contact with each other. We try to observe the two meter ruling as strictly as we possibly can. So here we've got Paulina, She's working in the, what used to be the pot wash or the dishwash section and she's moved her operations into here. And here I've got Chef Paul, who's in the process of doing a delivery. Um, and um, there's our range and there is our, our kitchen in the background. You won't believe the number of, of dishes that this man manages to produce on a Friday and a Saturday night is absolutely astounding. Um, number wise, what he is, what he's doing to save this business as we all are, but for one man to be able to produce what he does on his own single handedly is quite sensational. And um, to say that I worship the ground that he walk, walks on is an understatement because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have a business right now. But then again, every other member of staff has stepped up to the mark, those who have been able to, in order to um, do what they can to do their part in, in fighting to get through this challenge and to beat the COVID virus and to beat the fact that we are all in lockdown and to beat the system and the financial challenges that we all have to get through and come out the other side to whatever that is going to be the new norm and a whole set of other challenges that we're all going to face but you know what we're going to do it and we'll see you on the other side natalie great to see you here uh you sent us some footage back in march which was well heartbreaking for any business and you've just invested in this wonderful restaurant and suddenly Covid happens, lockdown one happens, the footage you sent literally brought me to tears and so I'm here now and I see how you've turned everything round and the place looks amazing, mm. please tell us what happened, how did you manage this? Well the videos that I sent you um, were as it was happening and during the beginning, at the beginning part of lockdown and then the second one as well, um, so it's sort of like day to day account of as it was going on in a raw state and the whole experience has been harrowing really and I know that it's an experience that a lot of other businesses have felt you know we're not unique but 
you know, I suppose what I've done is I've knuckled down, looked after my team, made sure that we have survived and we had to adapt. It was um, a case of survival. Um, so, you know, in the videos that I sent you, you saw that I'd turned the restaurant. I'd spent a considerable amount of money in January 2020 refurbishing yeah. after 22 years of, 20, 20 years of being here. Um, and, uh, and then obviously we got shut down at the end of March, so it was just a case of turning the restaurant into a factory and um, turning on the um, delivery autopilot, um, making sure that the staff were safe, the people that were vulnerable weren't working, but the ones that could work came in and kept the business going. Yeah. And uh, last year, at, in the summer, we actually managed to have a break where we were able to start catering to um, diners in May, outside, and then inside again, we opened up the doors um, in June. And we were able to enjoy, you know, a modicum of business, which was great. But obviously then the second winter came along and everything got shut down at the end of November. <clears throat> and we, we had to start all over again. And it was terrifying, you know, with, with, with everything um, going on in terms of lockdown and businesses shutting, people being isolated, not having any money coming in really not knowing what the future held was was really daunting but the only way I could feel I could get through it was just to keep going yeah. and we had financial support from government thank goodness through yeah. the co-funding. When did that come through? Because to, to begin with you didn't think you were going to get anything. No but that did start coming through we actually started receiving money in June 2020 but that was sort of backdated to March and April and May so we, we did get support basically from March of last year. Okay so from Christmas we got shut down, lost all of our income for December which was devastating to be honest with you to come in and see the weekend bookings that were full throughout the whole of December just disappear one after the other, cancellation after cancellation and phone call after phone call, which was just sort of like a sense of impending doom and misery and uh, here we go again. But sure enough, we turned it around and got the drivers back out and turned the restaurant back into a factory, took our Christmas decorations down. And, um, and actually we didn't take the decorations down, we left the decorations up and tried to remain festive. But yeah, that income was lost. We didn't get any support on the co-funding side for December, which was pretty, you know, upsetting and um, had a major influence on the cash flow. But in January onwards, it picked up again. So we had the support from government from then on in, which if we hadn't had it, it would we wouldn't have survived. But because of that support, I was then able, I was able to keep all of my staff on. Everybody from the kitchen to the front of house um, were kept on at then their full wage so that um, they were secure and um, I was able to then retain them on my books so that when we reopened, um, they were all here ready to to get cracking okay. and chomping at the bit to get back out and see customers and, and do what they do best. Yeah. So um, throughout all of that, you know, even though there was a lot of compromises on my part financially, because at the end of the day it was me that's having to cover um, any financial losses, um, the staff were good, they stuck by me and we reopened as a team and as a very strong, committed loyal team believing in what we've done um, for the Salty Dog and for the future of it. So they adopted it as their family and I've adopted them as mine, so to speak. So in a, in a roundabout way it's made you stronger. Absolutely, and yeah. actually, done, I mean this place is so different to how I remember it. We were here a few years ago before you did the refurb and it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And you've extended the menu, you've even got more choice. Everything, so, yeah, yeah. Everything you've done has been amazing and it's you're a real Gosh, you really are a survivor, literally, to have turned all of this round. I'm like blown away. Well, you have no choice when you. I, I've had no choice. I've had to just get on with it. And there's, you know, there's no, no failure is not an option. 
you know, when you saw it a couple of years ago, we were at the end of our sort of the way that I needed to adapt the business and change the format with my partnership with my ex-husband and and in also in the presentation and um, the um, the decor of the restaurant because we were heading to the we were shabby chic 50 shades of grey <laughs> and it was time to say goodbye to that look yeah. so once I'd made that commitment back in 2019 to refurbish and to give the restaurant another lease of life that whole journey has been part of the last two years has also had covid dumped right in the middle of it all <laughs> oh, you know yeah. so it's not just been a journey of redecorating and revitalizing the business and giving it a new chapter and a new life it's had this other traumatic and very dramatic story going on in the meantime but now we've come out the other side of the winter of 2020 december january february now in 21 and um and just recently uh, in the last month or so i've sort of done a little extra refurb out here put pretty foliage lighting festoon lighting and and, um, and 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 it's being very very well welcomed by everyone. You know, they're coming beautiful. in and going. This is great. You yeah, know, beautiful. so lovely to be here. It looks wonderful, and everyone's really enjoying it. You could be anywhere in the world here at this restaurant. You could be you could be in Monte Carlo. You could be in Miami. You really could. It's given it a real different flavour. And I think you feel like you're coming into pardon pardon the pun, but a bit of a land of make believe. Were there any times where you literally felt like giving up and that you couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel? Yeah. Right at the beginning, I can actually remember being under pressure from our suppliers um, and just not knowing where the government were going to support us, really not knowing what was happening in terms of anything. And I can remember standing out here in the middle of the winter just and just completely breaking down. and going for a walk to the end of the pier and just crying and my heart out, just sitting there, just sobbing. And um, it was it was a release to, ha I had to, I had to just let go of, of the fear. Um, and there was this gentleman fixing one of his boats and he came over and was a bit worried about me, but um, I got through that, but it was, it was, it was just, I think the fear of the unknown was the worst thing yeah. at that point. Yeah. And then Absolutely. and then every, and then since then of course it's been an ebb and flow of different regulations, different things that we need to stick to or not stick to as far as government guidelines. And it's it's just been an, an, an onslaught of challenges every single day. Yeah. Even now we still we still don't know where we are because of the um, contact tracing and the isolation of staff even though you see here a great restaurant we are literally hanging on by the skin of our teeth yeah. as restaurants around us are closing because they don't have the staff to run them because they have to, have to put their staff into isolation so we might not even be open this weekend we're carrying on as long as nobody gets contact traced wow. yes so this is great but it's like, it's a little bit like, you know, paddling hard and acting like a swan. Oh my goodness, so, yeah. wow, that, that, hanging that over you all the time. It's still you there. You might have to shut. Yeah. But what, two weeks? What, if, if, yeah. If, yeah, if somebody is contact traced and they, they are um, bound to be positive, then we would pop, and it was linked to the rest of the staff, then we probably would have to shut for two weeks with no support financially so long may this no not long may this last let's hope this finishes soon it's just yeah. we need we need to see an end to it well you've done an incredible job and i'm so proud of you thank, thank you, you darling for talking thank to you. us today well done thank you i'm not going to give you a virtual hug i'm going to give you a proper one in a minute mm -hmm. off camera <laughs>so for those of you who haven't got a clue who i am i used to be in a pop group called bucks fizz and we won the eurovision song contest in the early 80s we had lots of hits traveled all over the world sold a few records and amazingly still today 40 years on we're still 
performing. So here are our lovely merchandise ladies, Sorry. just giving ourselves a little bit of fun. This is Lara, and, and this is Tasha. There she is. Hi, so this is Lee, and you run the club Viva in Blackpool. Yes. So how was last year for you? Oh, well, like everybody really, it's, um, it had its very, very low moments, and uh, we kind of just had to get through it. You know, it's one of them many, many thousands and thousands of people were affected by it. But uh, hospitality, in particular, we took a, a massive uh, nosedive, just from from you know 100 to zero, kind of yeah. overnight. The phone stopped ringing. Um, we managed to just you know get through them 15 or 16 months, and now, thankfully. Blackpool's had a massive turnaround with the staycation. That's amazing. Uh, we're just putting all the shows back in. Um, the, the audience numbers are fantastic, and uh, we're just hoping that it continues now. Um, you know, I feel sorry for the, the, the foreign holiday uh, hotspots, but um, we've just got to kind of recoup what we lost, really, uh, yeah. in, the, in the actual early days of the pandemic. So what happened, you know, obviously you had to shut down, did you have, you had to give everybody refunds or? Yeah, well obviously we, we've got ticket sales for 12 months in advance, so because of the uncertainty, yeah, we had to sort all the people out and, and obviously people were having to work from home, so it's not, it wasn't an easy option just to open your box office and, and pro, do all the processes. So we had all that to deal with, um, people, didn't know what was going to happen, so it wasn't a case of we'll just hold for now and see what happens, and we'll recontinue when when we could recontinue. So yeah, it was just logistically, operationally, it was just horrible. But you know what? We, we, also, the entertainment industry, we you can't get down. You just got to get up, dust yourself off, and uh, off we drop. And we're back to normal, hopefully. Fantastic. So, what have you got planned for next year? Um, well, we're planning in our heart of hearts is um, a, a staycation too, I'm hoping. Uh, I think people are still going to be with the vaccine situation. Of course, we've got winter, winter around the corner. And I'm just hoping that, you know, we, we can continue to re-educate people to holiday destinations in the UK. And us being a major part of that, Blackpool. And uh, we'll just keep the shows flying ahead as much as we possibly can. And uh, just get bigger and bigger and bigger. I wish you every luck for next Thank year. Thank you. And Fantastic. I'm glad that you're in this venue tonight, can I say? <laughs> I'm so pleased to be here. Thank yeah. you so much, Lee. Thank you, Don. Take care. Hi, everybody. Oh, almost two years in hospitality has been through ups and downs, but we're here to tell the tale right at the other end going into 2022. My name's Lady Johns and I'm from Viva Blackpool. Um, I'm just so pleased on behalf of, of the hospitality sector that we're allowed to hopefully get back to 100% normality after what has been a journey, hasn't it? Um, so our full programme starts February uh, the 6th, 2022 and runs seven nights a week right the way through the whole year and beyond. In the last 10 years of Viva Blackpool, which is our anniversary, uh, August the 12th next year, oh sorry, this year now, silly me, I don't know where I'm coming or going. Uh, we've got loads of different shows, check it out on www.vivablackpool.com. We've even got the Fizz coming, that beautiful Jay and that lovely Cheryl and that man, I forgot his name. But anyway, uh, hospitality, we love you, thanks for supporting us, keep supporting us, it's the most important thing. And guess what, we're back. <laughs> in 2020, £5.3 billion was lost to the UK wedding industry and over 132,000 couples had to either cancel or postpone their wedding or civil ceremony. In order to shed some light on the situation, I brought in my dear friend Siobhan Craven-Robbins. She's a really successful wedding planner. My name is Siobhan Craven-Robbins and I'm a wedding planner. I've been planning weddings for almost 25 years now, 25 years this November. I'm based in London and cater for couples who want to get married in the UK and abroad. I've planned weddings in Marrakesh, in Mauritius, South Africa, France, um, pretty much all around the world. Most of my couples tend to be in their sort of mid to late 30s and planning their own wedding and paying for it. And so really, in terms of being a wedding planner, you're there to save them time and point them in the right direction. My clients, as I say, are quite an array from couples based in London, um, but wanting to get married in the southeast, to couples who want to do maybe something slightly more adventurous. I cater for a whole variety of budgets, um, being fortunate enough to work with, you know, million pound plus 
budgets and then sort of what you'd call the average spend on a wedding which is still pretty expensive. I have um, most of my couples are based in London, um, tend to be in their mid to late 30s and paying for their own wedding. I've also catered for celebrity clients such as Joan Collins, Barbara Windsor, Greg Kinnear and Ronnie Ancona to name a few. So it's, it's a whole variety. I think you can say that this is a career is um, extremely varied. No two days are ever the same, even in 25 years of planning. Um, and that's really what keeps it interesting. Your inspiration are your couples and it stops you from working sort of to a template. You, you're always creating something new and that's individual to them. And it's not got to be a great grandiose occasion. I, I really strive to bring imagination to weddings and very much to encompass who that couple are. And that in itself makes it a unique and very personal experience for them. Obviously, having had my business for 25 years, you have ups and downs and challenges, as anybody does do who is self-employed and, and running their own business. And I think up until now, the biggest challenge was the recession back in 2009, spilling into 2010. Our industry certainly took a big hit then. Um, obviously, people weren't spending money, um, jobs were being lost. Um, and moreover, also people perhaps who could afford still to get married were, were putting it on hold or not having as bigger weddings because they were very much aware of what was going on around them with family and friends and didn't want to be seen as sort of showing off or having some kind of splashy occasion when other people's lives were, were less than perfect. The COVID-19 pandemic has decimated our industry and, and that's not in any way an exaggeration. Um, as we know, it's an unprecedented time, but um, as an industry, we're, we're on our knees. Um, we're now looking at almost a year of, of being in this situation. Weddings are planned well in advance, usually very typically about a year, if not more. And, and so in terms of looking at business for this year, it's, it's not a case of, well, once we come out of this pandemic and it's safe to reopen places and for large groups to gather, that weddings are very quickly going to reestablish. It, they take planning. You can't just open your doors on a Saturday, having been told on a Friday you've got the go ahead. And this is what was one of the unusual things about our industry. So really effectively, as the situation is now, we've lost a year and a half of business because clients will now be looking to plan maybe this summer or certainly later on in the year, not before as things stand at the moment. One of the interesting things about our industry is that our couples are obviously very much behind us. We are, as the saying goes, in this together because these couples want to see us come out the other side. They, they want our businesses to survive. But ultimately, we are a network. We are a team who works together. Our industry is awash with artisans, people who've made businesses out of a talent that they have. They're entrepreneurs or they're small, small one-man bands. But ultimately, we all need to come together to create a wedding. You need a photographer, you need a band or a DJ, you need flowers, you need a cake. So we do all work together. And what's great is we've been very much supported, like I say, by our clients. They want us to be there on the other side. And so I'm hopeful that in the coming months, um, we're going to get a lot more help for our industry. The thing with the UK wedding industry or with weddings as a whole, it's not just the UK, is that this is deferred business. This isn't asking for help for business that aren't going to recover. These couples still want to get married. Only a very small percentage have actually cancelled their weddings altogether. The majority have postponed. And when you take into consideration in the UK, there's a quarter of a million weddings a year, 250,000 weddings is the average throughout the UK. There's now almost 400,000 weddings postponed to this year. So that's a lot of catching up to do. And so in terms of looking for sector support, you're not really talking about a handout. They're going to make it back in, in, in our tax that we pay um, when we have this sort of bumper time. But nevertheless, it is going to take time. As I've said, weddings are planned far in advance. It's not a case of we can just get the doors open on the Friday and have our first weddings on the Saturday. It's going to be some months to recovery. For me, and I think I can speak for the industry as a whole, we really have felt for our couples during this pandemic and particularly those that postponed 
when the first um, lockdown happened and then we're looking to compromise and have smaller weddings in the summer when weddings are allowed again and then again we were delayed by two weeks or then the tier system came in and there were local lockdowns so some couples have potentially postponed up to three times I, I, I just don't know how you mentally deal with that and you can understand why some couples have just cancelled altogether, just put their plans on hold altogether. It's very difficult to remain optimistic in that and as an industry we feel so for them and, and part of us wanting help to bounce back, to be there on the other side is that we are there for our clients. Weddings are a rite of passage, they're a celebration like no other in life. I, I don't think there's any other occasion where people will travel quite literally from all around the world and make the effort to be there. We all get excited about a wedding. We get a wedding invitation and we're excited, we're thrilled. Um, it really, above and beyond any other kind of party, is, is the ultimate ultimate excuse for a celebration and hence the importance within society and so couples don't want to give up on that that they want to get married when they can and many have compromised and had smaller weddings when we had this sort of pocket of time that was available in the late summer and early autumn where weddings for 30 people were allowed but even then it's a massive compromise it's not the celebration that they plan to have and so emotionally and mentally, it's, it's a great drain on our clients and obviously on us as businesses. Financially, it's impacted us, um, but also for couples, some of them may decide, actually, can we keep postponing and, and holding out in this way? We're just going to cancel and actually maybe we're going to rather buy a house or start a family. And those funds then are going to be spent on something other than a wedding, which is terribly sad. And my advice to couples is to hang on in there. We are going to get back to normal. You will have weddings as we once had, and we're certainly getting closer to that, albeit at the moment still without any sort of roadmap. But we're working hard as the task force to work with government on a reopening strategy and weddings will come back and so my advice to couples is to hold on in there right now I, I wouldn't maybe set a date I would nobody's got a crystal ball on this but just put your plans on hold and keep in contact with your various suppliers with your venue keep an eye on what availability they've got Many couples are going to have to compromise if they want to get married sort of within the next year, whereas they perhaps had a Saturday in June booked, they may have to look at having a Thursday or a Friday. At first, that can seem um, very difficult, but quite challenging, but actually planned in advance. Again, I come back to the fact that these are a massive celebration. If you get a wedding invitation for a wedding on a Thursday rather than a Saturday, you're not going to think to yourself, I'm not going to go because it's on a Thursday and not a Saturday. You make your plans, you fit around it. And I think that people are going to be more than willing to compromise on that going forward. Because if you're waiting for a Saturday in June, you could be waiting for maybe a couple of years before that sort of prime date is available because there are so many deferred weddings. And the longer this goes on, the more there's going to be. So that would be the only compromise is perhaps looking at the time of year that you want to get married and maybe day of the week. And as I've said, it's just no big deal. People are going to be there. It's still going to be the same kind of celebration. And at last, couples are going to be able to get married as they want to get married. Yes, I'd like to finish on a positive note um, in and amongst all the doom and gloom. And as I've said earlier, this industry is going to bounce back. Um, we need some help to get to the other side because we're small businesses that effectively haven't had any business for 18 months now. But it will come back. And also we have all these deferred weddings. Couples still want to get married. That is never going to go out of style. And moreover, when these weddings happen, they're going to be even bigger celebrations than they already are. I think we're all going to be so relieved to be able to come together with family and friends and have fun and chat and eat and dance together and, and celebrate that couple. Um, I think it's, it, yeah, it's going to be even bigger and better if that's possible, this kind of huge sense of, of, of relief and um, enthusiasm really for it. And so that's what I'd say that's, that's positive out of this situation. It's not going to go on forever, but equally, you know, we appreciate it's been difficult for all of us. I think there's very, very few people who've remained unscathed one way or another through all of this. 
um, but we will come out the other side and there's going to be some fantastic weddings happening when we do. Well, I want to thank all the people that helped me put this episode together, featuring the hospitality industry. They've had such a difficult time through the pandemic and let's hope they're about to make their comeback. If you'd like to see the next show in the series featuring the fashion industry, please press the subscribe button and you won't miss a thing. Thanks for watching.